In this lesson, we will review the anatomy of the long flexor tendons that go into each of the fingers. And let's start by looking at a simple line drawing of a representative digit. And the left-sided image is the palmar view. And then the image on the right side of the screen is the lateral view of the same digit. And if, to get ourselves oriented, we have the distal, middle, and proximal phalanges, and then uh, the metacarpal at the, at the base. The first uh, tendon is the flexor digitorum superficialis, which is seen here in orange color. This is the FDS, or flexor digitorum superficialis. And as it crosses the metacarpal phalangeal joint, somewhere over the proximal phalanx area, it splits into two. And these two slips cross the proximal interphalangeal joint and attach onto the middle phalanx. This is the classic arrangement of the FDS tendon in each of the four fingers. You'll recollect that each of these fingers has another tendon from the flexor digitorum profundus. And the FDP tendon goes deep to the FDS and continues on its way up to the distal phalanx. And it does this by going in between the two slips of the FDS. It crosses through up to the distal phalanx. And so this is the distal part of that flexor digitorum profundus tendon. The FDP in its more proximal location is seen here. This relationship is a very important relationship, and we need to review it in a lateral view as well, just to clarify the arrangement. So if we look at the lateral view, we have the two tendons here, the flexor digitorum superficialis, and note that it has split, and it allows the FDP to come up to the distal location and attaching onto the distal phalanx. This arrangement is an important arrangement because oftentimes one is faced with a situation where one might have a patient with a laceration over the palmar side of the finger. And in those circumstances, it is important to make a clinical assessment as to whether the FDS or the FDP, or in fact, both of these tendons have been cut. And there are some simple clinical maneuvers by which one can differentiate and make a good clinical diagnosis. Another point to note is that the metacarpophalangeal joint and the proximal interphalangeal joints, these are flexed by both of these tendons because both of these tendons cross these joints. The distal interphalangeal joint only has the flexor digitorum profundus tendon in relationship and is therefore flexed only by the FDP tendon. Let's look at this arrangement in a deeper dissection of a right hand now. And I will take the ring finger to start with, and let's put the FDS in its position, which is now highlighted here. And one can see the FDS splitting into its two slips and then going on its way to the middle phalanx. The FDP is seen in its more proximal location, going deep to the FDS, and then it continues more distally uh, on its way up to the distal phalanx. So this is the FDP here as well. And in fact, it has been removed in its middle segment, which is um, depicted by the dashed lines. That middle segment of the FDP is now quite visible in the middle finger. And one can see the FDS in the middle finger as well, going into, uh, into the split and, and extending into the middle phalanx. There's another important muscle in this area, which is known as the lumbrical, or lumbricals, because there are many of these, which is seen in this area, and I'm going to now depict that in red for all four digits. The lumbricals are small worm-like muscles. In fact, the name lumbrical means worm-like. And they have an attachment in each of those four flexor digitorum profundus tendons. And in each of the digits, they cross the metacarpophalangeal joint area on the radial side, and then attach onto the extensor mechanism on the dorsum of the hand. And therefore, these muscles are pretty unique because they don't have any bony attachment whatsoever. They extend from the flexor tendons onto the extensor tendons uh, in terms of being attached onto the extensor mechanism. And they have a very specific role in fine-tuning the relative tension between the flexor and extensors and allowing for that immense amount of manual dexterity that is available uh, in our hands to perform a variety of tasks, um, uh, everything from playing a musical instrument to painting to performing surgery.
So those are some of the features of the flexor, uh, long flexor tendons and associated structures in the deeper part of the palm.